Imagine if you could create graphics, import stock images, generate AI images from a text prompt, then manipulate those images with effects and controls, and even animate your graphics all within one app. Well, that's the promise of Modify. It's free, it's in browser, and is it that easy to work with? Can it really fulfill the promise and do everything in one app and help you create things like social graphics so much quicker? I'm gonna give you a quick walk around, see what you think. So after you log in, you'll be presented with this screen. We're gonna skip these walkthroughs because I can quickly show you this and then click on new project. And automatically a canvas is loaded in, which is these lighter pixels in the middle in this square. And the user interface should be pretty familiar if you've used any design software before. We have a layers panel over on the left, kind of like in Figma. We have a toolbar at the bottom. If we want to select things, we want to add in geometric shapes or text. We have this uh, quick add menu at the top where you can just type in uh, what you want to do. And then on the right, we have the canvas proportions. So we can drag these to change the size of the canvas or we can type in something and it will change it automatically. But also we've got this canvas presets button. If that's hidden like this, you can click show. And we have options for social and websites and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna click on Instagram portrait. And now we have something the perfect size to get ready for Instagram. If we just click outside of the bounds of the canvas, we will then deselect and that contextual properties panel will disappear. That always changes depending what is selected. So if I select the canvas again by clicking on the name of it in the layers panel, I can then change the background color. Click on that icon next to background. Drag this around. Let's go down to black. And these color options, you can also type in a hex reference. And there we've got a black background. So let's bring something into our image like a photograph. So the second option icon here looks like a photo upload image on a social media app. You click on that and you can import images from your computer, obviously. Or you can see there's all these stock photos here. You can actually search Unsplash natively within Modify, right within the program. Or you can click on this Unsplash logo here to go to the website and get some free stock photography. So if we were just gonna uh, search for something here, like a, a sports car or something like that, and then we have all these options here thrown straight in there that we can just scroll through and decide on uh, one that we want that is gonna fit within our composition, maybe something that's gonna work well. Um, this um, portrait, when you found one that you like, just click on it and then click add one to canvas at the bottom and it will import this straight in there to your canvas. Then you can use the handles on the edge to resize it. Just click and drag and move it around just like you would in any other program. That's all good. Okay, so the cool thing about Modify that makes it unique is number one, the modifiers. So the top icon here, manipulate your designs with modifiers effects. So you'd find these kind of things in Photoshop, but you've got to go into an effects menu and it doesn't quite have all these options and it's not as quick to preview them. As well as having this little graphic, if you just hover over any one of them, it shows you how this thing will look when you apply it before you obviously change any of the parameters. So you can just kind of go through here and um, see the kind of thing that you want to do. Look at all these different options and create mosaics, add noise and repeating effects. That works well when you've got something cut out. So you've got all these kind of different modifiers here that you can apply. Now, before we apply one of those, I'm gonna use its AI tool here to actually split this to layers, which comes up when I select the car. So I'm gonna click on that. You can just remove the background or you can split it out, which is probably a good option. Then hopefully we can hide the background. So I'm hoping that the AI is gonna know the car is there and separate it. There we go, took a while, but we got there. So we could hide the background. And yes, if we zoom in, you can see it's done a pretty good job at first glance of cutting out this car. And it's got a little bit of that tree maybe next to this wing mirror, but it's done a pretty good job with that. 
So then we can do some things like if we select this foreground car and then we try some of these other effects like the repeater which if you can't find it here you can go back to the top and click repeat add repeater modifier now you can see it, it's applied it to everything below it here so if we just want to bring these uh, to apply just to this one then if you select both the repeater and then hold shift and click on the other layer you want the foreground and then press command G to group them see now the repeater is applied just within that branch to this foreground item and then what we can do is with this repeater properties now open we can actually click and drag these things around so that it, it goes in the direction we want so maybe like going you know down the road this kind of thing you can change the scale so it's like bigger smaller maybe going towards the distance you can twist it don't think I want to do that let me zoom in a bit more so you can see what we're doing I'm going to click here again on the modifier in the layers panel you can just totally randomize it nah change where it starts and ends I think what we want to do is maybe just have increase the number here elements a little bit you see you can create these sort of weird effects and we could do something similar like with the background is blurred you wanted to sort of emphasize that but maybe in a different sort of way we could do this like lens distortion that looks stupid doesn't it that repeater thing let's just delete that <laughs> but it shows you what you can do so with this lens distortion here if we just apply that to the background again we've created this sort of effect and if you click on export it just shows you a preview you know of, of the crop and how it's going to look in the final sort of instance you see if we had this lens distortion let's say for example if we drag that so it goes over everything it's going to really affect the car whereas if we pull it back so it's just affecting our background the car still stands out a little bit more um, and then obviously you can add type and all different sorts of things to that one of the other really powerful things about modify is that you can animate all of these effects very quickly from the same place so you're not going from uh, one place to, to find or even generate images with its AI or use effects or then animate them but you can do it all within one so if we click on this lens distortion and then if we now hover over the left border of this properties panel you see we have this option add motion effect and then if we just click on that we then get this panel where we have all these different options so I'm just going to change the cycle to one and then if I start to change some of these properties like the amount and then hit play sorry here in the properties panel and then you can see it will actually animate this effect which is a very odd thing that it is <laughs> it's doing there oh I was changing the amount of the oscillation let me change that back to 100 let's try and do something with text so maybe if we just do a new project now and this one can just be square yeah let's maybe do an Instagram square let's give ourselves a black background again and we can just press T we can also select it at the bottom or type up here text add text three ways to do it type something in like animate again made a typo so I'm just going to change that in my content panel there and you can drag the font size not sure about Arial. Let me just change that. There's a lot of fonts in here. They appear to be Google fonts. So let's try Public Sans. They've got it. Change the weight, maybe. You can do things like the tracking, which it calls spacing, and all that kind of jazz. And if you types you know not where you want it to be or any element when something's selected you get these options to just align again so let's do that to the center vertical and horizontal 
And then that same sort of effect we just had, lens distortion, we can click there. And then what we can do is click to add a motion effect from that left edge. And then start to sort of play around. So I'm going to actually change the center position. So it, maybe not that way. So it's like from the left to right sort of animation. So let's just undo that first one. Let's add the motion effect again. And then change the center position. So it's going from left to right. I'm going to change the number of cycles to one. So that just slows down. Now you can see these sort of options if we look at the export. So it's doing that whole thing. I wonder if we put like a black rectangle under the, or maybe if we just apply it just to the type by grouping those. Yeah, then it's not applying it to our black rectangle. So let's have a look at that now. It's on a loop here. We'll play it. And that was a super quick way to add this nice animation to type. And obviously we could then go in there. I could make something, you know, for the thumbnail, start adding some, you know, circles in the back. You can just change all these properties. Let's get rid of the stroke. Let's maybe fill it with like a blue color or something like that. Let's maybe have an RGB thing because we've kind of got that in the background. I can just drag the ellipse underneath. Um, it's applying the lens distortion to the whole thing now, but I could group these up, maybe make this red, change this to some sort of overlay with the blend mode. And you can begin to see how we could like pull together very quickly some sort of animated uh, little graphic uh, that's really going to give us a lot of options. One more thing we can do, I'll finish that one off later, if we do another new project, is we can also generate. So here we have the AI tools. So if you click on this, you can do image guided generation from the layers you've got, or you can do text to image just like you would in Stable Diffusion or Mid Journey. So if we just type uh, a prompt in here for anything we want. I should have thought of this beforehand, but uh, let's think of a marble column building. Really should give it a more of a prompt, shouldn't I? But let's let's try this. We generate two images, and that uses one credit. And this is a free uh, program at the moment, and you have these so many. Uh, credits that you can use and it will take a minute to uh, generate these images and there we go we've got kind of a photorealistic uh, building and I'm probably going to go with this this first one here but then again you just go quickly from here to add you know all these different sort of uh, effects that we can add these are on text um, but what with these modifiers that we we talked about before um, click on this pattern refraction one, click on motion, change the amount, change the rotation. You know, very quickly we can create something from absolutely nothing. Whereas if you were in a workflow where you had to go into mid journey to generate an image and download that image and then manipulate it in Photoshop, then bring it into After Effects and try to animate it, that would be quite difficult. But if you just want to make something cool, this feels like it's still a beta, but maybe it's an option, particularly for guys doing social, to crank out graphics that are gonna be arresting and interesting pretty quickly. So what do you think? Are you gonna try this out? Would you like us to actually dive into Modify and give you some step-by-step -step tutorials so you can see uh, some of the features, or does this just feel like something that's not ready? Let us know down in the comments, and until next time, happy designing.